Welcome to Public Health Careers. In today's episode, you'll learn how to set visions and goals for your 2023. This is a live workshop led by Janessa Sochi and Win Win. Links below to follow them. It goes over Ikigai, defining your values, design mapping, and finally creating your visions and goals for your year. You'll probably get the most value from this session by sitting down and working through the prompts while you're going through the session. And before we get to the workshop, be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share this with a friend, and support by buying a cup of coffee below. Enjoy. Welcome to Public Health Careers. I'm your host, Omari Richards, founder of the Public Health Millennial. We're going to dive deep into public health topics and career journeys. You'll hear diverse career stories, absorb professional development and career strategies, get tips while also learning from others to help you in your own journey and learning of public health. Learn about the vast world of public health, public health careers, or just hear public health stories. Stay tuned so we can do our part towards a culture of health well-being and equity for all. I'm not sure how many people here have heard of Ikigai. You can raise your hand or a virtual hand if you have. Um, but if, thank you. But if not, um, I'll explain. So essentially the concept of Ikigai is, it roughly translates down to what is your purpose. And uh, one can figure this out by asking um, questions that are similar to the ones that are on the screen um, or thinking about the intersection of what you love to do, what the world needs, what you're good at, and what can you what you can get paid to do. Um, so the intersection there um, often can lead to what your purpose is or what it is that you might choose to do for some life's work. Um, so here I have a few questions um, that we will go through one minute at a time, um, and we will silently reflect on what the answers to these questions for ourselves are. Um, so when will give us a timer, and we'll start with question number one. Uh, what skills come to you naturally, and what skills um, are you interested in learning? So we'll go for a minute, and it has started. <laughs> on number two. So which activities do you do that make you feel like you're in the bliss zone, um, which can be described as you just kind of are in the zone and you forget about the other things around you? Which activities make you feel like you're in the bliss zone? Let's go.
this feels fast, um, it should. <laughs> the point is just to start thinking about these things. So number three, um, what quality about yourself do you admire the most? in the exercise a little bit but I think that was about a minute I started it a little bit later <laughs> okay we'll move on to number four who are your role models for that one okay and lastly what would you do differently if you had to start your life completely over one minute Awesome. How did that feel? Charlie, I couldn't help but notice your face. <laughs> it was difficult, but very useful, especially the last one. Yeah. I never thought about this one. It's very, it was insightful. Awesome. Yay. And we'll send the slides out. So if you feel like you want to sit with any of these questions a little bit more, um, you can take a picture of the slide in case we're a little delayed in the email. Um, but we will send it out in case y'all want to sit with them a little bit more. Okay, we'll move on. Um, for the next exercise, the, this one has been a constant over the last couple of years because we found it very helpful and also important to reflect on our values and 
once you kind of review these, I'm going to actually send the link right now in the chat so that y'all can pull them out um, and see them for yourselves, maybe a little bit more zoomed in. Um, but having these values kind of one is interesting to see, especially if you do it from year to year, how some of the values change. It's not that maybe one value is completely out the window, but there are some values that maybe come to the forefront a little bit more as your experiences kind of accrue over time. And then they also serve as almost like a starting point for you to say, okay, if I want to do X goal, is that goal actually aligned with my fundamental values? And if not, maybe how can I adjust? And then even from a day-to-day, -day, um, what you choose to engage in, who you choose to engage with, are those people, are those activities aligned with the values that you have identified as being important to you and why or why not? So. We'll take actually about five minutes here to independently look at those values and choose about five that you find um, stand out to you as values that you have found important for a long time, values that you want to lean into a little bit more, uh, whatever kind of sticks out to you. So I'll start the timer for five minutes. And Sochi, if you don't mind, maybe this is when we can play some music in the background for folks. Sounds good.
Five minutes. Quick check in there. How are how do folks feel about that exercise? You got a thumb. I personally struggled. Like I feel like in the past I have been, I don't know, excited about putting a bunch of values down and had trouble narrowing them. And then this time I got like very zoned in on like two and tried to um, find more that, I don't know, stuck out a little bit more. I agree. Um, I've had mine chosen and even still I was looking at the list like, oh, but what about that one? I can't believe I didn't put that one down. It's really hard to narrow down just five. It really stuck out to me. I pulled up the website to get the list on my laptop. And they said that um, your values are not chosen, but our values reveal themselves to us. And so when I was going through my list, I just looked for the ones that I have been demonstrating that I value. Because I think sometimes I say I value one thing, but what I'm actually doing um, shows that I value something different. Love that tie. Yeah, I love that because it's like either that could mean that maybe we want to focus more on what we're actually actioning on, or maybe we want to adjust our actions to um, what is standing out in our minds, but isn't necessarily being demonstrated. So thank you for sharing. And then the next two things that we're going to share are, again, just tools that might be helpful. Um, so Janessa is going to talk a little bit about SMART goals. Yes. So um, if you've done this session before, you've heard of SMART goals. If you went to Emory, um, you've heard of SMART goals. Um, but for those who are not familiar with them, um, basically, if you've ever tried to make a goal for yourself um, and struggled with keeping consistent with it, um, and then, you know, the year flies by and maybe you haven't reached the goal as you um, had initially planned, um, you might think to yourself, how can I make it more attainable? And um, a, making a goal SMART is a tool to do that. So SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. Um, so basically, these are parameters to make your goal um, so that it is then achievable. Um, in project management, we say that we can't um, get to a goal without defining what success looks like. And um, SMART goals help me, at least, to specifically define success. So an example of making a goal SMART um, is taking a goal from, I'd like to exercise more which is a goal, but is a little vague um, to pinpointing down how much exactly, when, where, you know, um, how um, you might do this. So you could take a smart a goal and make it smart um, by saying from I want to exercise more to I value my health and, and social activity. So I would like to exercise three times a week for at least 30 minutes um, in group settings like dance class or CrossFit. That way it's specific, you know exactly um, how you will be carrying this out. Measurable using numbers, you know how many times a week and for how long you will be doing this. Um, attainable, um, let's say you know that you have, I don't know, you don't have classes on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And that's the perfect spot for you to have this kind of activity. So it actually makes sense within your schedule. Um, relevant, it's relevant to your goals and your values. Um, like in the example that I just gave, maybe your health and your uh, desire for social activity. Um, and it's time-based. Um, like I said, uh, if you want to do the activity for a certain amount of time, um, a certain amount of days a week. Um, so when we define success more clearly, it makes it easier for us to actually meet the goal. 
Um, so at this time, um, if there is a goal, uh, maybe one that you have in mind that you're formulating for the year, I'd like to take just two minutes for us to consider ways that we can make this goal a little more smart. Um, so I will put the music back on and we'll put a timer on and we'll get started. y'all last little tool slash um not even really an exercise before we go into the manifestation portion these are some life categories um that's similar to smart goals can help you organize what's in your vision slash on your heart to set as goals this year so first you would just think about life areas that are important to you some of these areas might be livelihood and lifestyle body and well-being creativity and learning or they might be even simpler um, you could categorize them as spiritual physical emotional financial intellectual um, you have a lot of different options and you can just choose maybe four maybe five that are important to you and then once you do that then you can do this exercise that's called desire mapping and that just means that instead of saying okay in body well and well-being i want to lose x amount of pounds or look a certain way or in spirituality i want to go to uh, my place of worship x amount of times instead of going straight into the tactical piece you actually think about your desires and how you want to feel within that life category so physically you might say that i want to feel strong and connected and fulfilled so instead of what one might typically say around a specific image based goal image based goal you might actually get more creative and think about an activity that helps you feel those desires within that space and for me in past years i've chosen categories like financial freedom learning wellness and social impact and then based off of how i wanted to feel within those life categories then i developed goals that led up to that um, and that just, again, helped me develop goals that captured a lot of different aspects of my life that were important to me or are important to me, um, and then focus on making activities or engaging activities that help me feel the way I want to feel. 
So as we go into these 30 minutes that we're about to give you, um, then really consider maybe some of the answers that you wrote down in the Ikigai exercise, look at those values that you jotted down, and then you have the option of maybe turning things into SMART goals, maybe organizing them by life categories. Um, but with that, you're going to have just a whole 30 minutes now to basically whip out. If you enjoy the vision boarding thing, then you can get your magazines and scissors and start gluing and taping away. If you want to go back to some questions that you like wanted to dig into a little bit more um, before you start jotting down your goals, this is, again, the free time for you to create whatever you want to create so that you can reference back to throughout the year. Any initial thoughts or questions or anything before we go into this 30 minutes? Okay, awesome. And then I'll mention one last call for accountability buddies. I actually have gone ahead and set you up into pairs, okay, for the people who have put their emails in there already. And we will actually spend just two minutes um, allowing those accountability buddies to just really quickly meet and there will be a prompt for you all to talk through um, and don't stress or feel pressure to like put your email there for an accountability buddy because the prompt can also be done alone and you can find a different accountability outside of this group as well um, so I got you Bria and if anyone else wants to to do it feel free to put your emails in there um, we'll go ahead and start the 30 minutes I'll give it 10 seconds in case anyone does have questions though I didn't Hear any questions? I have a question. So yes. this this next thirty minutes is for us to map out. Um, this like the, this this is what's the goal of this next exercise? So this thirty minutes is for you to literally manifest what your twenty twenty three vision is. So that might mean putting it on a vision board. That might mean writing down those tangible goals, even in a spreadsheet. If you're a spreadsheet type of person, I tend to have like a big poster paper that has those life categories and those goals underneath. So it's literally your time to put your vision into whatever format works best for you. Thank you, Lynn. No problem. Just to, um, mention some other, I guess, examples. Um, so for the people who like a more creative, um, I don't know, a creative option for their vision boards, if you don't have physical materials, um, a lot of people are making them on Canva. Um, so that's just another tool that you can make use of. Um, even on PowerPoint, um, it's just something digital or physical to have. Um, and Melissa is saying, that maybe she's not sure how to begin. Oh, sorry, that was a direct message. Well, um, maybe this can help everyone else. <laughs> um, so um, yes, I think, actually, why don't we show maybe your schedule, Lynn? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is looking like now because this has been my schedule in the past, but for folks who are like, okay, you shared a lot of things. Where do I actually start? I personally really appreciate the Ikigai exercise just to get my mind going. And then I start with my values, having those at the very top of my paper. And then I go into my life categories. And then underneath each life category, I start putting smaller goals. And then um, I think within this presentation and slide, if you skip all the way to slide 15, this is a more like intense thing. And I didn't do all of these things, but I think this was after our first year. Um, then one life category was financial freedom. And then I broke it down into this schedule that like showed month by month what I wanted to get done. And it varied from things to like, reading a book, um, to just doing my taxes, uh, to getting a tenant, to getting promoted at work. Um, so that's kind of how I broke mine down. But again, you're welcome to do it in whatever format. And I, I repeated this for each um, life category that I had. And I tried to make sure that, so yeah, learning and wellness, um, learning, I was applying for a master's program, wellness, there are family things. Um, I told myself to actually take uh, vacations and things like that. So with all of these goals, I also looked at my values to make sure that they were aligned with that. So 
that's an example of how you might start. Values, life categories, smaller goals is the simple way of me breaking it down. For me, I chose to go through um, those like nine life categories. Um, there was like arts, travel, business, uh, health. Um, so I started with those and just thought about the things that I wanted to accomplish within each of those. And that um, tends to be the framework that I stick with. Um, and then I guess as I, I start with the life categories and then I bring in my values. And then from there, I'm able to say, well, you know, I value this within this and I want to do this. Like, um, I suppose I take the desire mapping also into um, into account because I just think about the things that I would like to accomplish or think about who I would like to be by the end of the year and what kinds of uh, steps I can take to be that person. Um, so yes, here's a physical though um, thing that you can look at to help. And then if you have any more questions throughout the time, please do ask and I can gather some more uh, resources and examples um, because these can look so many different ways. Yeah, and in the pink for me, that was stuff I went back to look at to see like what actually happened. Um, so yeah, I'll start with just like 27 minutes at this point, um, just to make sure we stay on track for reflection at the end too. And remember that this is, I'm starting the time now, <laughs> but just remember that this is not the only time you have to set for your 2023 vision. Um, you can take time after this session, obviously, tomorrow, next week, um, to continue to flesh this out as much as you like. This is more of a little kickstart and guide, so. Enjoy, manifest away.
was approximately 27 minutes, almost 30 after I talked a little bit. So hopefully y'all got a bit of a, a start on your 2023 vision. And as I mentioned a couple times already, we wanted to give folks a chance to have a little bit of accountability because um, we talked about love a lot um, and just life in general is not done in a vacuum and we understand the importance of community. So even two people can count for community. And now is when we would love for you to go into your breakout rooms, which I have set up. And once you go into those rooms, then this is your prompt that I'm about to drop in the chat. It is, what do you think is the biggest barrier to you achieving your goals? What support do you need in order to overcome this barrier? All right, so let that sink in. Feel free to copy it real quick in case it disappears when you go into the breakout room. And it's about 10 of you in the breakout room. So even for the folks who don't have one, still reflect on this question and think about who might be helpful in terms of an accountability buddy to support you through it. So I'm gonna open the rooms and you should see a little pop-up on your screen with the option to join. And if you decided last minute that you want it or you're deciding now that you want to get assigned to a room, feel free to let me know. But if not, just go ahead and use the two minutes. You'll have two minutes in those rooms. I forgot to tell people that before they joined. Um, but you'll have two minutes to reflect on that question. So go forth into your breakout rooms. Hi, so I have a question. Yes. So we're talking about making plans and, you know, um, planning the things that you want to do for this year and all of that and i was thinking what about if you are unable to follow through with all of the things that you you know you've listed all of the things that you want to do how does one navigate not being able to meet their goals when they want to meet them or even meeting them at all like how how would you you know like um help someone navigate that i feel like we're talking about planning 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 but then for I, i'm sure i speak for a few more people when i say that um we've had experiences where you plan things and they never you know happen when you want them to or never at all and it's not because you didn't you didn't plan but it's because you know life happens so what would you say to someone um so that they are prepared for the eventualities like that yeah so wow that two minutes went by super fast um so do you mind if i answer when everyone comes back in like five seconds yeah absolutely that's fine okay okay because i think it's a great question that a lot of people could benefit from hearing and melissa i'm so sorry i thought that you left left um <laughs> so I've switched your partner out with someone else, but um, we can make sure that you have a partner uh, after this. Okay, Did the break no problem. Go super fast. That went so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have everyone's email so that y'all can connect with your buddy for more than that two minutes, but at least you got to see each other's face and hear each other's voices briefly. Um, so that was, was something. And we got a question in the outside room um, just around what someone, what I and anyone else on this call really might say to someone who um, doesn't necessarily hit some of these goals that we're planning for at this time. And we're doing a lot of planning now, but just life will happen. Um, and what would I or anyone else on this call say to folks who don't meet those plans for whatever reason? And I think one, it kind of, at least from my perspective, would start with like, how do you feel about not achieving those goals? Because sometimes like we have an assumption that to achieve a, a goal, to not achieve a goal will automatically feel like a failure, will on a, uh, automatically feel devastating or a negative feeling might be associated with it. But if you reflect upon your year and you didn't achieve these goals, but you still had a really solid year and maybe you had other accomplishments because even those 
life things that maybe get in the way of plan goals, like being able to navigate those life things can count for accomplishments in and of themselves. So even if it's not a planned accomplishment or a planned goal that you achieve, I think really making sure that you give yourself credit for everything that you did do. And even if you did less, um, that just might mean that you were able to lean into rest. So I think there's a lot of different ways that you can frame what did happen in your life so that you don't necessarily view those um, unachieved goals as things that define you or define your year. Um, and I think just the big theme overall for me has also been grace. So in order to do what I just mentioned in terms of reframing what happened and kind of taking life events in stride when things don't go as planned is just remembering that humaning is hard as I've seen people phrase it and just navigating your day-to-day -day is very difficult so again like giving yourself a lot of grace and saying that by not achieving this I was able to make space for myself to navigate whatever else came my way um, and that's okay too. Do any folks have any other thoughts around <laughs> that? I actually that? do. Yeah. So this is interesting that this came up because um I was pulling out my version of this from last year, which I have here, my smart goals. And I'm like, shit, my goals are the same. Like, does that mean I didn't accomplish what I came out to do last year? And I was kind of having this same dialogue in my own brain. But the thing is like, when obstacles got in my way, I learned new skills. I learned more about that thing that I wanted to do it's become like a broader goal. Um, and honestly, I'm looking at it and although my my goals are pretty much the same, I've been able to get more clarity on like, you know, in some cases how to do things. In some cases, like I've halfway done it. And so now I'm halfway there for my goal for the year. But I'm actually gonna kind of like recycle this. And at first um, I felt kind of guilty about that or something. But I'm like, no, I have made, despite not being able to check the things off altogether, I've made so much progress in all of these areas, which is, um, you know, something in itself. And I, I had shared this with a few, of the, a few of the people on this group chat, or I shared this in a group chat with a few of the people on this Zoom call, um, but it was just a post on Instagram. And it's kind of about like, if you don't hit exactly what your goal was, like, it's okay, give yourself grace, maybe create a new plan, think about a different way to get that feeling if you're doing the desire mapping um, format, but it just says, forgive yourself for being inconsistent or in this case for like not hitting your goal, then take some time to create a plan, a new plan, a different plan to move forward with. Don't hold a grudge against yourself. Instead, keep trying, keep reminding yourself why. Um, and again, if your why is different and maybe that goal no longer applies and you feel good about what, maybe that's just taking you in a different direction. So that's all. Thank you, Charlotte. And hopefully um, the different components of this section were helpful. Again, we we did not promise at the beginning that by the end of this, you will have a fully fleshed out vision and results not guaranteed. Um, as we just mentioned during that little conversation is that life will take us in a number of different directions, but hopefully this session just helps you be somewhat intentional about where you try to go. And if we put energy into these spaces and the hope is that they manifest um, to in our best interest regardless of how like the details actually turn out um so we do have a closing prompt um so she, you're welcome to tell them what it is certainly um so uh we have been thinking about what our central theme for the year 2023 is um last year uh, we did the same thinking of a word that kind of would guide our life and our goals just to sum it all up um and it turns out when and I uh chose the same one for the second year in a row uh, and for us that would be to be intentionally courageous um so for me just courageous in like the the choices that I'm making um how I'm moving I think courage can be found and the little things and the big things it's not always you know like moving away but sometimes it's just 
speaking up for yourself in a setting where maybe you wouldn't have before or, you know, just making different choices. Um, so for me and um, I think for Wynn as well, uh, we're just looking to be more intentionally courageous in our decisions and the way we uh, move in our lives. Um, so we are interested in hearing from you all if you guys have a word, maybe a value or something like that that's popped up during this session that you think that you'd like to move by. I can share a little bit more while folks are maybe thinking. Um, if you do have to drop it right at the the half hour mark, feel free to. Um, yes, you can also drop in the chat. Thank y'all. Um, and I can share from mine. I put intentionally courageous because I was courageous was born out of my last year's theme around freedom, where I was really leaned into the concept of freedom in a lot of ways personally and interpersonally and socially and i realized that in order to be free that because of the way socially things are set up and the way that we've been conditioned in our families and things like that that you can um you it, it often requires courage in order to be free in a lot of ways so i realized oh I, courage is not something i would necessarily um had ever really thought intentionally about um so i wanted to be more courageous in order to be more free and then i uh, intentionally stood out to me because i find myself kind of automatically doing certain things, especially around social media, like picking up my phone, even if I'm just like walking to the car to check something, I'm like, this is not a time where like being intentional, if I'm being intentional, doing checking my phone while I'm walking to and from the car isn't really doing for anything for me. Um, so if I'm more mindful, like it can actually save me, I don't know, a trip or a fall or for forgetting something in my house. If I were more intentional about being present, even about those small moments throughout my day. Um, so I really want to focus on being intentional in big and small ways and applying courage. So I see a number in the chat, reconstruction and renewal, contributing joy, healthy discomfort. Um, Love that. We've been doing that throughout the year. Um, anyone else want to share one before we drop? Being me, love that. Yes, I've got just something to add. So one of my themes every year is, is peace, and it's probably going to be a theme throughout the rest of my life. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a theme, it's a value, um, and it's also just like the overall feeling um, that, I'm, that I'm always, you know, trying to have for myself and exhibit and, and share with everyone else. Um, and so with that, I am not... I am not a type A. I'm not someone that has to do, do, do and go, go, go. I just want to sit and be peaceful. That's like a perfect day and time. Um, but you can't just sit and not do when you do have goals and things that you want to accomplish. So the desire mapping and asking yourself, how do you want to feel for me is something that I think I'm going to try and um, like think more about versus what do I want to do. I feel like focusing on how I want to feel is going to get me to actually accomplish the things that I, that I want to do. So I've already laid out, I've already laid out the SMART goals and, and the steps in the past and that doesn't always get me to, you know, accomplishing a certain thing. But if I'm thinking about how I want to feel, I think that's going to keep me more focused. Um, yeah, focused on the actual goal. Because like I said, if I'm, if I'm focusing on that feeling, that ultimate feeling of, of peace, and I know that's going to come from, you know, accomplishing X, Y, Z versus doing X, Y, Z, then for anyone who is like me, um, 
you know, maybe focusing on the feeling rather than the action will help you out. So just want to throw that in there, if that made any sense. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear about your trial and error with the process and finding out what works. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Takola. We had one last quote to leave y'all with. Um, really appreciate y'all spending the time with us today. Of course, it's bell hooks because we stand. Uh, but what we do is more important than what we say or what we say we believe. And to the question that we mentioned earlier, um, I wish Adam was still here because I think this is very pertinent. Um, even when we emphasize the do and the actions and moving in line with the values that we've had, we have identified today, even the do part isn't defined by these, again, these SMART goals, what we jotted down today. They can be if you want them to be, but also there are going to be inevitably different experiences that shape who we are and that we will respond to. Um, and and those are also important aspects of our growth and um, just how we navigate the world. So give yourself credit for everything that you do and try to be intentional with what you do and, and try um, to have what you do reflect some of the values that you've been able to identify today, uh, even if it's not like a nitty gritty quantifiable goal. So anything else, Sochi? I really just want to thank everybody for coming out today. I'm really excited uh, that we've got to do this again for the third year in a row. Um, and I'm happy to see how it's grown. And now that we have people from two sides of the ocean, um, it's just, uh, it fills me up. So thank you all for joining and being a part of this today. Yay, say cheese for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to. <laughs> <laughs>